let's stop like making trauma sexy like trauma's not sexy it's it's trauma first sentence is my immediate priority is air girl breathe the unhauling journey continues Hi, I'm Jessica Nicole Dickerson, aka JD, and welcome back to another video. So today's video is actually, I think, going to be the hardest because, as I mentioned in my previous videos, which you should go check out, part one and part two, where I unhaul a lot of my books. During this process, I accumulated a maybe pile. So I'm continuing the unhaul journey by going through my maybes. I'm actually hoping I say no to all of them because I'm loving how much space I have on my bookshelves. Don't look at it. I haven't organized it yet. That's gonna happen in another video. So don't look at it. It's ugly. I'll fix it later. Shh, you're beautiful. Don't listen to anyone. Let's hop into the unhaul pile. You probably can't tell from there, but I'll do a different angle. This is a large pile of books that I will go into full detail in another video of my final unhaul, but I did want to show you the maybes that I'm reflecting on and going to try a chapter of each of them today because I I just don't want to let go of a book that would bring me joy. And I'm actually really proud of myself, which you will see in my 30 books in 30 days vlogs. If you haven't checked it out, the first episode's out, but I actually have been unhauling way more frequently. There's a series in here that's really popular. When you read it and you don't find it as interesting, just putting it in the pile. That's what I've been doing. I've been actually really proud of myself and I think this is going to be a pattern I'm going to do with all my other books. As I read them, if it's a 3 star, 2.5 star or lower, I'm just going to put them to the side. Let me grab all my babies and we'll just have a, have a little seat and read through them and get rid of some. I'm so sad. Okay, the reason why I'm sad is because I'm so hopeful these are all amazing books, but obviously some of them aren't. So, I just need to let go of that stress. Just let them go. It'll be okay. Okay, you can't tell, but I have a stack of books by me. These are my maybes. I'm going to be going through each one and um, checking out the first chapter and seeing if I jive with them. Honestly, I'm giving each of these books like 10 pages. Even if the chapter is longer than 10 pages, if I am not hooked within the first 10 pages, you gotta go. That's the rule I'm following here. I want to either love the character, love the premise, or just be curious enough to continue reading it. That's the vibe I want. If I'm not vibing with it in the first 10 pages, I don't need to read it right now. I have a lot of other books that I pick up and immensely like love. That's the energy I want. Obviously, everyone's looking for different energy. Starting with the top of the stack, we have a classic that I purchased because it's cute. <laughs> like, look, it is cute. Like, I'll show you too. I bought them in a bunch of different versions, like Native Sun. I really love how it looks, and I actually love Native Sun, so I'm keeping it, obviously, but I don't know about this one. I haven't heard about this one, so I gotta check it out. Let's see if I keep it or toss it. But first, I wanted to share the first sentence with you. This is Telegraph Avenue. Okay, chapter one, Dream of Cream. First sentence is, A white boy rode flat foot on a skateboard, towed along hand to shoulder by a black boy peddling a brakeless fixed gear bike. Dark August morning deep in the flatlands, hiss of tires. Okay, my reaction to that like first little paragraph or first sentence, I'm interested. The only thing on the back is a quote that says it just turned out that a tower of elephants and turtles was no way to try and hold up the world so i'm gonna read the first chapter of this and see if i want to keep it or toss it just because of this quote i'm feeling all types of ways and that first sentence actually interests me i'm like black boy white boy my my immediate heart <laughs> my heart starts racing from that sentence i'm like who's gonna get in trouble who's getting murdered <laughs> what's happening Okay, I have finished the first chapter, um, or the first 10 pages. I think I'm going to actually toss this one. Ah, I feel so bad saying that. The first sentence was interesting, and I feel like the writing of it seems really, really good, but I don't think the story is intriguing enough if by the end of the 10 pages I'm like, Okay, they're skateboarding and they're going to their small business. Um, there was just, there was no I want to know what happens next. Plot wise, not here for it. I have I just didn't have any curiosities about it. Ooh, just hit the table. Yeah. So 
I am gonna let that one go. I'm proud of myself because literally after reading the first sentence, I was like, I'm here for it, I'm buying it. So I'm happy I stuck to my guns and I said, I, I personally don't need that book, nor do I think I would enjoy it. My personal preference, obviously everyone's preference is different. Okay, cool, moving on. Next on the stack, we have two roads from here. I will do my best to put all the books in the description box because I've heard that it's annoying when people mention books and don't say like the author name or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? I'll just put that stuff in the description because I can't read names. Too many sounds, it's very hard. So this one, honestly, I have no idea what this one's about, but it was kind of giving me fangirl vibes of students, their lives changing either senior year, yeah, five high school seniors, one life changing decision, two very different roads. And it's about these different people making very big decisions about their future, college, um, their mother's mental illness. It just had a bunch of stuff that sounded nifty. I was like, I shine me up. I like that. And then you know what? Years have passed and I haven't read it yet. And especially with contemporary, I think I'm getting a little bit more harder on the contemporary because I've been reading it a lot more. The first sentence is, I sat outside coach's office with the feeling like my brain was about to give birth to a radioactive maggot. Wow, that's expressive. <laughs> Why a maggot? Ew, ew. The visuals, the visuals. I finished the first chapter, which was, I think, yeah, under 10 pages. I'm gonna have to toss this one too, um, which was so funny. I, the first sentence sounds interesting, it's very um, graphic, but I also feel like from what I read in the first chapter and a little bit into the second one because I was wondering if they were trying to have a unique writing style for every voice because it looks like they're going to... Okay, I think I kind of fixed the light situation. It's still bad. There's still light coming through. I don't know what else. But yes, so finished the first chapter and read a little into the second one. It seemed like the author was maybe trying to have a very distinct voice for each character, which is possible. But I don't like it. Let me read a few of, of the descriptions that jarred me to my core whilst uh, reading the first chapter. I also just don't like on the first page when someone says, and the worst human being ever in the world, yada yada. It's like, you don't have to tell me who this character hates. You could show me why they hate the character. When you're telling versus showing, that's how I feel. There's also a sentence about this guy who is the worst person in the world, how he thinks he's like sexy teenage Jesus. Smoking hot dance teen chicks and off brand cheer babes. You can see why I went into the second chapter and was like, is this how they all speak? There's also a, like a varsity MVP photo and part of this character's ass was in the last shot your ass out in a photograph nasty okay and then we also have took a deep ass big boy breath you know that quote that everyone uses where it's like i was holding a breath that i didn't realize i or i didn't realize i was holding my breath you know that quote this was the author ran with that and went deep ass big boy breath <laughs> what i just don't like that writing style there's a lot of just cussing for no reason a lot of telling me how i'm supposed to feel Next on the stack, we have Finding Felicitas. Mwah. <laughs> Finding. Can I speak? Finding Felicity. <laughs> Felicity. I don't know why that's so hard. This book was giving me fangirl vibes, so I wanted to read it. If you don't know, fangirl is one of my favorite books. That's why I'm like trying to find books that replicate that feeling. I don't know if I have faith in random books that I picked up because of the aesthetic of them. Like, their aesthetic looks nice, but it's like, Jess, what about the inside of the book? Is the inside good? Oh no. Chapter one. By the time graduation is over, I just want to go home. Accurate. That's how I felt too. Graduation is not fun. It is so boring. You're just sitting there, standing around. Like, I didn't have a college graduation because Rona done destroyed that, but I'm actually happy that I didn't have to waste tons of money. My family didn't have to waste tons of money just to wait around to see me cross the stage way more fun are graduation parties i would recommend having those safely social distance wear your mask get vaxxed and all that stuff allow me read this and see what i think dang it okay so i finished the first chapter 
and I want to keep it. Dang it. I kind of was hoping to go through this whole challenge and say no to all the books, but because I am getting rid of so many books and I have a little bit of space left on my shelves, not a lot, but a, a little, I'm like, ah, I think I'm going to keep this. But the thing is, I don't know when I'm going to read it but i feel like i should try i feel like i should give it a go because that first chapter was interesting um she's definitely very very antisocial, which i love i think especially as i'm getting older and are i'm out of school now and i don't have a lot of people around me frequently and when friends like ask to go out and hang out and stuff and i'm just like no that was a tangent but i think i'm gonna have to keep this damn it okay i'm so scared to go through this list because i don't want to be keeping other books oh you know what I'm already, I'm not even going to read it because there's a movie for it and someone recommended it in the comments to me that I should just watch the movie. So I will. And that is The Art of Racing in the Rain. I will just, I'm going to just put that over there. Bye! Uh, the next few books are Emma Mills books. Uh, guys, I need your help. Do I need to keep these? I do love contemporary. I loved the first book that I read of hers. Um, which was first and then a Pride and Prejudice retelling. Y'all need to let me know if I need to keep these. Comment below. Help a girl out. I'm gonna start with Famous in a Small Town because I like things that involve celebrities and stuff. As an actor, I'm very interested. <laughs> the first sentence is, Britt had been fired from the Yum Yum shop, which came as a shock to approximately no one. Oh damn, she a bad employee too? Mm. I think after reading this and knowing the synopsis, I think I'm good. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a toss this. I'm a donate it to someone who will love it. On to the next one, Foolish Hearts. Okay, let's see. The synopsis is when Claudia accidentally eavesdrops on an epic breakup. <laughs> epic. What does that mean? Of Paige and Iris, the it couple at her school. She finds herself in hot water with prickly, difficult parents. That's a synopsis. I can get behind. Hey. <laughs> okay, let's see the first sentence. It's at Amber. There's a name here, and I can't. I barely read words. Names have their own. They're so hard. Why are they so hard? So it's Amber's blank annual pink party that everyone begins to unravel. Okay. Okay, I read the first chapter. Sorry, I didn't mean to say it like that. I read the first chapter. I found it interesting, but I don't know if I would read it right now. I'm thinking the same way about finding fel felicity. Can I speak? Oh, I don't know if I'd read this right now. It just seems like a fun book. So I, I think I'm going to keep it. Damn it. But I just don't know when I'm going to read it. <sighs> Sad. Just as I thought I was doing a good job clearing off all my shelves, I'm hoarding again. Maybe this video was a bad idea, I don't know. Next on the docket for another Emma Mills books, it's This Adventure Ends. Let's see what the synopsis is. Every adventure ends. Go figure. But here's where one begins. Sloan. 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 I think it's how you say Sloan. Isn't expecting to fall in love with a group of friends with a group of friends when she moves from New York to Florida, especially not a group of friends so intense, so layered with private tragedies and secret codes, so all-consuming. That's so dramatic. First sentence is, my immediate priority is air. Girl, breathe. Okay, I think after finishing the first chapter, this could be interesting. But I think it's going to be a, a three star. I think I, I don't need it in my life. So I'm going to let it go. I'm going to toss it. I'm sorry. Moving right along. I have three books left. Let's see if I can get rid of them all. Or if my heart is going to hoard more emotional attachment to books. Ah, okay. The next book is A Mapped for Wreck Girls by Jessica Taylor. In this twisting tale of loyalty, betrayal, and love, two sisters must survive the wilds if they can first survive each other. Are they murderers? I mean, it sounds wild, but damn, why would you put the trust of some random boy? Agonizing boy. I hate when they- but some boy descriptions are just so funny. They like sound so like hot and heavy and troubled and like that's supposed to be attractive. It's like, if you got a messed up 
mental health that's not attractive like that's like i'm concerned for your well-being you shouldn't be that troubled it's weird to me that like why it always depicts the tough brooding troubled boy as hot it's like can we can we stop normalizing that can we normalize like someone having a stable mental health or like at least if they don't because i get it not everyone does but like let's stop like making trauma sexy like trauma's not sexy it's it's trauma we should address it but don't no one's character should be like your trauma is such a turn on girl bye i probably got a little heated over that summary and i didn't need to the first sentence is we sat on the edge of the ocean my sister harry I think that's how you say it, and i inches apart but not touching at all that's to show that we don't like each other I'm going to have to pass on a map to correct girls. This may be good. This may not be good. I I won't find out because the first chapter did not interest me. Sorry. To the next book. We have Always Never Yours by two people. I know this one has Shakespeare in it, so it's going to make me want to read it. But like, that shouldn't be a reason why I read books. Like, Shakespeare's freaking everywhere and it's not always like the best. Let's read the synopsis. Shouldn't a girl get to star in her own love story? What a weird quote. 17 year old Megan Harper is about to do for her next sweeping romance. Damn, she already had a sweeping romance already? At 17? Lucky bitch. It's inevitable. Each of her relationships start with the perfect guy and ends with him falling in love with someone else. Ew. First sentence is a quote. All the world's a stage. But moving on to the next sentence, Brian Anderson's butchering the line. <laughs> I listened for the posturing and borderline mania Shakespeare intended, but nope. He's doing some sort of half English accent and throwing <laughs> iambic pentameter out the window. Wow. Oh my gosh, a wave of brown hair, an ever-present smirk, and wow, do I want to go over and flirt with Wyatt. Oh biceps I have to admire peek through the sleeves <laughs> okay dang it am I only gonna read this just because it has Shakespeare in it dang it um it seemed a little silly and over the top with the romance which I don't tend to like um the way she was like attracted to his biceps and wanted to flirt with him and how the summary says that she's like all about these like really perfect relationships and even though they start falling for someone else I mean those aspects are not my favorite to be honest but I think I'm just gonna give this a shot just because I do like the Shakespeare and theater references so I'm, I'm wondering if like that that plot element will actually make me enjoy the book a lot damn it that makes three books I want to keep but you know what's good now that I'm challenging myself to really reflect on books I'm gonna keep the three but what I'm gonna make sure I do is after I finish reading them, I'm going to be very honest with myself saying, is this a book that I would reread? I only want to keep in my collection books that I would want to reread. If a book was just okay and it's taking up space on my shelf and I'm not going to recommend it to people, if I'm not going to even think about reading it again, I don't want it on my shelves. You know what I mean? So I'll just have to be very honest about how I feel after reading it. Or if I get 50 pages or 100 pages into it and it's not clicking unhaul unhaul next we have iron cast which i mean has a pretty cover like she looks like cute and stuff i know this is like a period kind of piece yeah in 1919 ada daughter of immigrants a spunky devil may care heiress making an unlikely pair okay but at the Cast Iron Nightclub in Boston anything and everything is possible at night on stage together the two best friends whose afflicted blood gives them the ability to create illusions through the air weaves magic under the employ of Johnny something, the club owner, notorious gangster. Chapter 1. Corrine's first day as a nurse at the Harvishon Asylum for afflictions of the blood was a frosty Thursday. Okay. I'm gonna have to pass on this one. I mean, the magic and everything seems interesting, but I just, like, I have no pull or curiosity 
to figure out more so i think i'm gonna have to toss this one ah! so out of the stack i'm only keeping three and i do feel like I, this might be a little bit of a mistake seeing as the ya i've been reading recently have been like three stars and lower i think my reading mood has definitely just gone towards science fiction and a little bit more adult fiction just in this season of the year during the fall season yeah or it's like has to be hard hitting contemporary and i say that because i think like perks of being a wallflower i read recently was so good but it's like hard hitting it talks a lot about suicide and trauma and stuff so i don't know if i'm in the mood for these so these might be just sitting on my shelves for quite some time and these two are gonna be sitting on my shelves solely because of my peaked interest in shakespeare which i don't know these are summertime reads, so I also don't know if I'd get to them anytime soon. But I have space on my shelves to hold on to them just a little longer. Oh. Did I fail this challenge? Technically, I made up this challenge, so I don't think I can fail something I created unless I'm like really hard on myself for no good reason, which I won't be. This is fine. This is good. I'm glad I checked out these books. They seem like these two seem silly and fun and this one seems to be a little bit more hard hitting which i love in a contemporary so i'm hopeful that these will be good books we'll have to see and wait and find out comment down below tell me what is a book that's been on your tbr for the longest time that you've wanted to read but you've been really hesitant about i'm very curious comment it below and also put this emoji if you made it to the end of this video because i really really appreciate you the next unhaul video will be the final video of me showing you all the books i'm unhauling and there's actually more books in addition to my last few videos because i have been reading more books during my 30 days 30 books in 30 days challenge i've been reading more so i've been just unhauling books immediately. I even DNF'd one. Check out the vlog if you haven't seen it. But yeah, there's a lot of books that I've pulled aside, even more so than my two other unhaul videos. So I'm gonna have one more final unhaul video where I wrap everything up, tell you what I'm giving away, and I will be giving it away to a library instead. Sorry guys, I just don't have the money to be sending out books everywhere. I just don't. It's too expensive. Shipping, the weight of it, it's not worth it so i apologize for that but if you made it to the end of this video and you like my video please make sure to give it a thumbs up it means a lot to me and it helps out my videos and if you even like it so much be so inclined to join my patreon i really really appreciate all my patreons i'll be having a special offer on my patreon very soon so just you know stay tuned subscribe hit the notification and all that youtube stuff and i hope this video gave you a little bit more sunshine and i will see you in the next one bye me wearing a sweater when it's la and it's like 70 some degrees it's so hot i need to stop doing this like trying to have the fall aesthetic whilst also being in la nope nope